Hi, this is Anne with Fiber Designs by Anne, and today I wanted to show you how I made this modeled fabric. I've already got a project going on this piece, but I just want to show you how simple this is to make and really kind of fun. I have a piece of fine cotton fabric. This would be a Pima cotton or a um, prepared for dyeing cotton. It doesn't have to be those, but it needs to be a nice fine cotton, kind of like the fabric you would use, you would find when you buy a batik. I also have a product called Material Magic, and um, it's a spray fabric stabilizer. But um, I've used it in a lot of different projects. So I'm going to use it for this project. And I'm going to take my fabric and I'm going to really saturate it. Uh oh. So I painted this so I can tell what I'm doing. That's stream. This is spray. So I'm just going to spray it. You want to be where you can kind of contain your spray. It's not going to hurt anything, probably. So I get it a little more saturated. This uh, Terrell Magic makes, I have another video about this. It makes actually several where I've used this product. It makes the fabric stiff and you can even put it through a printer at your own risk, of course. But um, for this project, I get my fabric pretty wet. I'm on wax paper, but that's really just because of the glare, the reflection. So I'm going to get my fabric totally saturated. Make sure it's really moist. Probably even, you wouldn't probably make it quite this stamp when you're using it just for a regular fabric stiffener, but since I'm using it a little differently, I'm using it kind of as the resist. So when I get it to this point, I'm going to... Excuse me. I'm going to just take the fabric and I'm going to bunch it up. Just bunch it up so that it's keeping it as flat as I can, but just all bunched up. Even to in bringing the corners in. Then when I get it and you want it as flat as possible and as tiny of bunches as you can. So I might open this up and bunch it a little bit more so that it stays kind of flat. And I actually have another piece that I've already done that with. So I'm going to set that out and I'm going to let it dry. And after it dries, you're going to have a piece that is like this. It's stiff. That's what the material magic does. It stiffens the fabric. Now... I'm going to bring my wax paper board back up here. For this piece, I used jacquard uh, fabric. It's textile paint. And um, today I'm going to use something a little different. I'm going to use set of silk and just see if it makes any difference. I did water this down so that it could move really easily on the fabric. Because this fabric is dry, it's going to take, take the paint a little bit differently. So just be aware of that it might take a little bit of experimenting. And I'm going to grab a little tray to use for a palette. So you might want a little bit of water. This is quite thin, so I may not need water with this. And I can um, put it in something separate, or I can put it on the fabric. When it hits the fabric, chances are it's not going to move. So what I like to do is have a soppy brush, paint brush, artist brush, and I might get that really wet. The material, the material magic, if it gets wet, it will become soft again. It will dilute the magic and become soft again, so just be aware of that. Because it's dry, any paint I put on there is going to stay strongest, as you can tell by looking at the modeled piece, strongest where it hits up on the top. And that's cool. That's what I want to go to be going on here. So I'm going to go all across the top. Get a little bit more. I could put the paint right on here. Might be a little stronger. The thing with doing that is, and why I may not want to do it, is because the dark will go down in the crevices, and I really want that dark to stay up at the top at first anyway. Because once it sucks into that fabric, it's there, and that will be the stronger points, and that will give you more modeling within the piece. So I'm just going to keep taking it around on those high spots. Then once I have those high spots covered, one thing I'm noticing with this, it's using a lot more of the set of silk 
than it did with the jacquard. So the jacquard will go farther. You won't use as much product, so that may be the way you want to go. Now I'm going to take my little palette here, try not to get paint sprayed everywhere, which I do on a regular basis, and get that a little wet. And then I'm going to just really let it go into the all the little cre crevices, the crannies, nooks and crannies, and I can tell this is not as much as I want, so I'm going to actually pour, pour a little in here and then put a little more paint in there. Stir that around so we're pretty diluted, as you can see. And then I'm going to really let it, and you can see that that's going to be lighter down in all those little nooks and crannies. At least that's what we hope happens. And I had, when I did the blue piece, I had a really nice hot, in fact, day, sunny day. So I just set, stuck it outside. Sometimes depending on if you're letting it dry quick or slow, quick in the sun or just slowly drying by over time, that will affect the concentration. That's not if that's the word I want. It will affect the darkness of the fabric. If it's out in the sun and drying faster, it may uh, lighten up, kind of like when you do sun prints. Again, it's just kind of all experimenting to see what will happen. I'm seeing that my dark really got kind of diluted on here, so what I think I'm going to do, well, one thing I'm going to do for sure, I could just pour the paint on here. I don't want to lose my my uh, stiff little ruffly things and even I'm okay with some white being on there I think that's cool too you can take a squirt bottle and spritz it so that it makes that paint travel a little bit more trying not to get your fabric to flatten out too much and I might go around hit the edges a little bit and I think I'm gonna go ahead and take take my paint again full with fuller strength this time and go ahead and hit those like I said with the Jacquard, it wasn't necessary. Excuse me, it wasn't necessary to go back and hit those top points, top parts. But I'm going to go ahead and do that. I see they're pretty good there still. So when the fabric is dry and you first touch the the fabric with the paint, that's when the fabric will hold that color and probably not move. I see a little more white maybe down in there that I want. So now I'm going to take this and because unfortunately today we have a little bit of a rainy, drizzly day. I'm going to have to just let this dry over time. But, or I could use a heat tool. I may do that to rush it, as long as it keeps my little wrinkles all in there. And then I'll bring it back and we'll open it up and I'll show you what we've got. Anyway, so at this point I'm all, it's pretty much dry. I want to make sure it's all the way dry. I'm noticing it's a little damp, but that's okay. Um, now there's two things you could do. You could pull the stretch this out and use an iron and heat set it. Be sure and use something to protect your iron and your uh, ironing cover board, maybe parchment paper. Um, but what I like to do, because it's more of a surprise, is to take it to the sink and use clear water, clean water, and rinse and rinse and rinse. I'm going to be rinsing the material magic out, so it'll be going back to the fabric and um, not stiff anymore. And, but it will also take some of the paint out because that's just the nature of, of painting on top of Tiro Magic the way I do. Some people may be able to paint on it and it stays. If you don't rinse it, of course, it, the, the paint would all stay. So I'm going to do that now. I'll take it and rinse it and then I'll come back and I'll iron it out and show you what we ended up with. Okay, I'm back and I rinsed my fabric out really well until the paint stopped coming out. I'm on an uh, ironing surface and I have parchment paper and I'm sorry it's kind of noisy. You could use an old cloth or something uh, to iron it and I'm just trying to keep my surface from getting any paint that may be left on here because sometimes it can stay on. And so we're going to open up and see what we have. Oh, I'm loving that. And I, I rinse it out, don't want it stiff because I will in, be stitching on this at some point because that's what I do. But I love this model effect, even looks kind of like there's flowers in there. And it was really simple and really fun. And I'll take some more parchment, put it on top, and dry this out.
There is sort of a back side and a front side, but you could sure use either side. There's not that big of a difference. Sometimes the weave of the fabric just shows more on the back side, but that can give an even better texture and look to it. Oh, I'm loving this. So I can use that for the background in so many different things. I'll bring the other blue one up. Again, just use different, different uh, types of paint, but they're both for fabric. And I'll show you on this one, I'm just taking it and I've taken some flowers. These petals are actually from leaves that I paint and um, they were just scraps and then I just took a little more, I used wax pastel and just, uh, I may have glued these on in fact just with a simple glue because I know I'm going to stitch over them. So it just makes a really neat background. It could be used as a block in it all on its own in a quilt. I'm sure you can come up with a lot of different ideas and ways to use these fabrics. So I tried another piece and this time I used the Tyrell Magic and I did not let it dry after I squished the fabric up. Once I scrunched the fabric I decided to go ahead and paint it right away to see if there was any difference. Again I'm using Jacquard paints and a soppy brush and after I painted it then I stuck it out to dry, let it completely dry and I actually used the heat tool to dry it a little faster. And I know when I was doing it, I was being a little more gentle and not pushing the paint into all the little nooks and crannies because the, the fabric was not stiff. I didn't let it dry. So next time I would always suggest letting it dry and then painting it. Anyway, this is what I ended up with. And I like it. Um, I think more paint probably came out of it because it didn't, it wasn't put onto dry fabric in the first place. It was put on a fabric that would have the Tyrell Magic in it. But I still like it. I still think it's a really great piece and I can use it for a lot of different applications in my quilting or my fabric um, fiber art or mixed media art. So it's really fun to be able to experiment and I hope you'll give this a try. And if you like this video, I hope you'll give it a thumbs up and tap the bell to get the newer videos that I have coming out. Thanks a lot for watching.